Okay, this is going to take a while to get through, so bear with me. Uh, but if you're interested in getting the Kerberos SDR app uh, running uh, with your Kerberos SDR and the RDF mapper in a uh, an arrangement where you can be mobile in DF with this, uh, you could set up multiple devices, uh, whether stationary or mobile. Um, this is where, by the end of this, this is where you should be at, which is the Kerberos app. Kerberos SDR app is running. Uh, I've had to simulate a couple things here. So this uh, phone, of course, is in Android Studio. Uh, it is not, obviously, not directly connecting, or I should say, okay, so a couple things you need to consider. When you really set up the Kerberos SDR and the app, and you've got everything set up, uh, but for most people, it's probably going to be in the uh, Raspberry Pi. The software, when it boots up in the Raspberry Pi, it uh, first comes up for a few seconds or so looking for an SSID being broadcast by your phone's hotspot. Okay, so the whole intention is you're using LTE uh, or whatever uh, data on your cell phone. You're then broadcasting the hotspot so that the Raspberry Pi can connect to it. So there's still the connection between the Kerberos SDR app and the uh, software running on the Raspberry Pi and of course the radio while also at the same time you're still getting data uh, to feed the maps. Okay the other way is you don't set up the hotspot on your phone the Raspberry Pi will eventually stop looking for that SSID and then it itself will uh, broadcast an SSID which you can connect to. Uh, but then when you do that, of course, you kind of lose your data for the maps and stuff like that. So what I have simulated here is I have the uh, Kerberos SDR uh, plugged into this same laptop. You see everything kind of running in the, in the background. And this is a, a build upon from the, uh, the first video I did just a few days or so ago. So the software is running in the laptop. The laptop is connected to uh, the network here. And then the, uh, let's see, and then so then the phone is also connected to that same network. So while it's not directly, you know, connected like I had just uh, explained about the Wi-Fi, it, it's still simulating uh, the phone connecting, uh, or I should say the uh, Raspberry Pi and stuff connecting to the phone, and then the phone still has data. Okay, so that's a lot there. Uh, let's see couple things I learned along the way um, in the Kerberos SDR app when you first install it here and this uh, under settings okay so I put the server address uh, that is the IP address of this laptop where they where the software is running okay You'll follow along the directions, and if you do it where the Raspberry Pi connects to the phone's hotspot, you're then going to have to figure out what IP address that Pi got. Okay. The other thing, this log file name, I've noticed a couple times, uh, well, really every time I've tried it, if you do not open this and hit just OK, you're going to see this warning pop up about the CSV file, something, permissions error, or something like that. Okay, so knock that out. Also, when you get set up with your RDF mapper, there's a couple of things I noticed that this defaults to HTTPS, okay? Well, the, uh, the server address, uh, let me think. I, I'm pretty certain, because I'm looking at it here, I don't, you, you can't really change this to HTTPS. So the bearing server, yeah. So I think that's part of the problem where I had to take the S off of here, run HTTP. When the S was there, uh, the, the app would um, crash. So I've got HTTP, I've got the IP address again because the server is running on this laptop. And then you need to make sure you hit a, a the slash save.php. I left the station name, just this default Android app one, hit okay. 
So let's minimize. Let's go over here. Okay. All right. So those are kind of the key points I wanted to hit on the app itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to stop this processing. Okay. So, and we'll stop the bearing server and we'll stop RDF mapper itself. Okay. So let's start this from the beginning. So All right, so I got multiple windows open here. So what I've done since the last video is I copied the RDF mapper bearing server a folder when you purchase this uh, RDF mapper I've copied it over uh, and I've copied over RDF mapper so let's see so the bearing server itself we need to okay so uh, what we want to do is uh, I'm in the desktop RDF mapper bearing server you can see there's a folder there, data. We can just mod that, uh, let's see, data. Yep, take a look in the data folder. And we'll want to do the same for the actual data file itself. Okay, so in the RDF uh, mapper bearing server, we will run You'll do sudo uh, php space uh, dash capital S, the IP address of, uh, in, in, in this case, uh, the IP of the computer I'm running it on, and then we'll leave it at port 80. Okay. So that will start the bearing server. Let's see. Also, we're in the Kerberos SDR folder. Uh, like I've shown in previous videos, we've already installed everything. We'll run uh, run.sh. Okay, I made one small mistake. Uh, I, I'm adding this uh, piece in. Uh, not really a mistake, but uh, I forgot to mention that the uh, run.sh file I actually edited that and commented out the IP adder is 0.0.0, .0 and changed it uh, or added another line to reflect the uh, IP address of this laptop that I wanted it to be accessible, um, you know, to the phone and so on and so forth. Okay, that's why this is going to look out of place. I'm just adding this uh, into the video, so I don't have to do it all over again. make sure the processing is working okay and let's see what else we need to I'm on the desktop I, that's where I've got the RDF mapper sitting a couple things um, or at least one thing I noticed when I copied this over from a USB drive at first um, I was getting uh, some errors trying to start this the checksum didn't match so, you know so on and so forth I ended up just uh, putting it on the USB stick again and then copying it over and then everything was fine so must just not have finished. So now RDF mapper is running. It'll open up a web page automatically on localhost 80. Alright so we've got that going. So now let's, uh, so if you have this all set up and you go over to your phone and you're checking out settings you know just like I said you're changing only the IP address leave the port number as is open up the log file name just hit OK that first time so that way it's writable and we come down here I change the server address to what we uh, set it up on, 
which was the HTTP uh, port 80, and you need to make sure you have the slash save.php. Remember this Android app one, and then we're going to upload to the RDF mapper server. Let's see. Uh, so click on your web download upload. We'll change this to 2.168.2.196. Uh, you hit enter, you'll notice how it automatically puts that slash after there. Let's add add and remove station. So let's add Android app one. Help if I spelled it right. Okay, so all right now. Now I don't have any antennas. You know, you'd have to do the proper sync and all that. I'm just showing. You know, once you had it all set up and you were processing. see the spectrum display is working we do DOA estimation you change the arrangement and stuff you enable DOA estimation music's what they recommend and see we're processing all right now we can come over here Got our phone pulled up we should be able to Click this like little timer stopwatch looking thing. Now we've got DOA value updating started. And it's you know it's not gonna change much because there's no antenna and I didn't really set it up to sync, but this is just showing you so and then of course the GPS uh, coordinates uh, are kind of hard uh, or set at uh, where this Simulator is running. And if you zoom in, there you go. And you can see it ever so slightly moving here. You got the update period. Now, if this was uh, a real phone, and you had this set up to where, uh, you know, just like they recommend, the Pi, the software, the antenna array on your car, then, of course, uh, you would be able to... Oh, the other thing, too, is, um, you know, you'd probably need some sort of VPN or just what I'm going to show uh, eventually here when I get to it is zero tier. So you'd have zero tier on the phone. You'd have zero tier on the server. And so anywhere uh, you're at, uh, you know, the phone's going to have internet. The phone will be, just like I showed in another video, would be connected to zero tier. Uh, you know, we'd change some settings. You'd tell the, the phone to connect to the server IP address, which is everything you see here. Uh, but it's going to be, of course, that zero tier IP address. So you should uh, have no issues having multiple devices, whether they're stationary or uh, driving around. And, of course, if they were driving around, this little icon here would be updating uh, and driving while the uh, actual lines that are being drawn will update. Uh, it would be nice if this uh, kind of saved that information over time. Uh, but if you had, say, three devices, one here, one here, one down here at the same time, and maybe, I don't know, say you were DF and uh, direction finding a uh, some sort of frequency at uh, you know this airfield in theory all the lines should be drawing at the same time as the devices are moving and uh, or stationary so you'd get uh, a pretty quick fix on whatever it is that you're trying to find all right thanks for hanging in there um, i tried to 
break this down as much as I could, uh, considering this isn't really a real phone per se, uh, but it's just as if you had uh, set this up uh, with a network and were direction finding. All right, I'll try and go more detail uh, with multiple devices and actually real phones out there and how this will, uh, will work all at the same time. All right, thanks.